Hi everyone. So in my last video, I told you how the full moon was going to be passing in front of the planet uh, Mars. Uh, kind of like you can see in this picture over here, which is a simulation actually in uh, a program called Stellarium. So this is going to be happening on December 7, uh, later on in the evening in North America and uh, a day later in uh, Western Europe. So you can check your local time. And in my last video, I showed you how to take a picture of, of this event using a regular DSLR or mirrorless camera uh, and a lens. Uh, and I also covered how to uh, find out what time this is going to be in your local time zone. So you can check out my previous video. The link is in the description below for that. Um, in this video, I'm going to be covering uh, primarily how to image this event if you are going to be using a telescope along with your DSLR or mirrorless camera instead of just a camera lens. So if your telescope looks like this, if it's a Newtonian reflector, you should be able to unthread this top part uh, where the eyepiece goes. And that should leave this bottom part with this M42 thread. And you'll need one of these T2 adapters. So this is T2 to FX, which is for my Fuji camera. You can also get them for Canon or Nikon or any other kind. So this just threads right on to the M42 threads here. So once you've got that threaded on like that, just uh, grab your camera and you can attach the camera directly on here. Okay, so this is my Fuji camera. And I'm just going to line up the red dot over here. And clicks right into place. Now you can adjust whatever angle you want that at and uh, take off the lens cap and you're ready to go to the next step. If your telescope looks like this, then along with uh, one of these T2 adapters, you might also need one of these other pieces that threads in, uh, but your scope likely came with that or you might have a part lying around. So you just thread that in to your camera and then you can insert that into the telescope and tighten the locking screws. And then you can adjust focus from here. Um, so uh, the first thing to start off with is to remember to charge your camera batteries. There's nothing worse than getting out there and realizing your batteries are dead. So charge your camera batteries beforehand so you're prepared. And optionally, um, you can also use a, a dew heater. So. An example would be something like this. Uh, so if you already have one of these dew heaters for your telescope or camera lens, you can put that on your telescope. And the other side, you just plug that into any USB port or power bank. So that'll uh, make sure that your scope doesn't dew up when you're trying to image out there. And then the other thing I also recommend is to use a, a sturdy tripod or a telescope mount. If you're using a telescope, you will probably need either a very heavy duty photo tripod, uh, such as this one, or you'll need a, an actual telescope mount if you're using a bigger telescope. And one other thing to remember is that you should let your telescope cool down for, I would say, at least half an hour for a smaller scope, maybe up to an hour for a really big scope. So you let it cool down outside to ambient temperature, uh, and that way you get a better, sharper image. Otherwise, if you end up uh, taking your scope out from a warm room into a cooler outdoor area, you're going to end up getting fuzzier images for a while. So that's why it's necessary to make sure your scope is cooled down to the ambient temperature that it is outside. Now, once you've done all of that, uh, first you'll have to set the exposure for the lunar surface uh, manually. So um, if you're using a DSLR or mirrorless camera, I recommend starting with something like ISO 400 and then set your shutter speed to a fairly fast value such as about 1 500th of a second and then uh, <clears throat> and then take a look on your on your LCD screen behind your camera and then adjust your shutter speed or ISO to get the, get the moon properly exposed and make sure Mars looks okay next to it as well. Uh, since in a telescope you can't change your aperture, so you'll be changing either your shutter speed or your ISO. 
Now, I don't really recommend using a Barlow unless you have very good seeing, which is pretty rare. Uh, otherwise, you're just going to get a very large magnified fuzzy image. Uh, and uh, unless you're using a tracking mount, because if you use a Barlow, it's much harder to handhold or to use a photo tripod or a non-tracking tripod to image. And if you are using a tracking mount, you can also use a, a slower shutter speed, something like 1 250th of a second, and decrease your ISO to reduce noise. And if the seeing is good and you're using a tracking mount, you can also use a Barlow in that case. Now, what I recommend doing after you've set your exposure on the moon and taken a couple of quick shots to make sure you've got the exposure right is to, to uh, zoom in uh, using the buttons on the back of your camera and then manually focus uh, either on the edge of the moon or on Mars. So do this beforehand before you actually start uh, imaging for real to make sure that you've got the focus locked. And once you've got the focus locked, if your telescope has a little locking screw underneath, use that gently to lock your focus in place so you don't accidentally change it. And then take a few more test shots uh, just to make sure that, that the exposure is good and that things are in focus. And then I recommend uh, that you start taking images or video uh, about 10 to 15 minutes before Mars actually goes behind the moon and then just time it in Stellarium as I explained in the previous video that I made uh, and then start imaging it again as Mars is about to come out from behind the moon and image for another 10-15 minutes after. So that will allow you to make a, a nice time lapse of the whole event afterwards if you so choose. And you can also take video instead of taking pictures if you want. Um, just one thing to be aware of is that some cameras, whether DSLR or mirrorless, uh, have a limit for how long you can take videos. So sometimes it can be as low as 10 to 15 minutes. So you just want to be aware of that so your camera doesn't cut off in the middle of, of you taking video of this event. So uh, yeah, give that a shot and let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. And I look forward to seeing some of the shots you take. So I'll be making one more video which will be about uh, how to use an astro camera uh, to image uh, this occultation and that'll be an astro camera with a telescope. So that'll be the more advanced tutorial. So I'll be uploading that hopefully tonight or later on in the day tomorrow. Uh, so check that out as well if you've got time. And if you find any of this helpful, consider subscribing and also check out my uh, Instagram channel at Our Astro Life on Instagram. So thank you and clear skies.